Welcome to Happy Crappy Paints, part 14, where we paint Sogar Sag. Uh, this is the end result without blood effects. We have that as an optional uh, final step to do. And uh, here is the version with the added extra blood effect on the heart that he is holding. But uh, before we can begin, we need to do some emergency repairs. After I primed uh, the Mini, I accidentally broke it completely by stepping on it. But uh, as we have learned in the in the previous video, it's very, very easily fixed. So a few seconds in hot water, uh, maybe three seconds at the most, four maybe, and then it automatically moves back to the position where it wants to be. So if you happen to do something similar to one of your minis, do this, let it dry completely, and then use uh, some PVC glue to uh, fix the mini into its original position again. In this instance, it's a glue that um, needs to dry completely before you press the ends together. So I've cut this video a little bit. Uh, I do let the, the glue dry here completely before I I press the two ends of the arms back together. I think I speed up the video, I think that's what I do here. Yep, and then I press the two parts together. And then I let it dry for another maybe twenty minutes or so just to make sure that it's completely dry. I use Kislev Flesh as the base skin tone for Zogar. I wanted him to be m more human looking than the other Picts. Um, for p the Picts I decided to use Rekha's Flesh as you might remember, which makes them more of a evil fantasy orc looking type creatures. Um, you can use Kislev Flesh for the Picts as well if you'd rather have them be more, more human looking than what we did in the picked video, painting video. So it's certain this is certainly an option that you can go for. Uh, the wash is uh, going to be Seraphim Sepia instead of uh, a flesh shade. Uh, I think that looks a little bit better on on um, this type of character where they they are a little scruffy, sunburned looking. Or I imagine them to be. So uh, we'll get to that uh, soon. Uh, I water this paint a lot and I applied three layers of the base paint. Um, we're also going to use Kislev when we highlight it back up again. XV88, I use that for the spear. Also quite watered, so as to not lose any other detail on the wood grain of the spear. For this uh, recording, I had the camera at a different angle than I used to, uh, making the shots a little wider, which uh, did have the result that the camera could didn't focus appropriately. Uh, I had too much other things in frame than the mini I was painting. So I, as you see here, for example, there's uh, quick zooms in and out, and I apologize for that. Ashen gray and Abaddon black. Two parts ashen, one part Abaddon, is what I use for all of the feathers and the hair. Um, it's good to have quite a light and highly watered uh, paint here. Uh, if uh, adding quite a bit of water to the paint make the white uh, primer shine through, which uh, saves us a little bit of a step in the end 
of uh, highlighting. Of course, you you may or potentially even should highlight the hair back up a little bit or back to a brighter color of gray in the end. Um, but uh, going with the spirit of this video series, we want to paint these minis quickly with as few steps as we can, still making them look really nice. Also used black for the hair of the skull that was being impaled on his spear. Spear, sorry. And you can see here again that I have a lot of shots like this where it's out of focus, and I do apologize. Some details here where feather it's ki kind of hard to see uh, where the feathers covers his feet and around his ankle. And I did do a mistake there and I painted uh, what's supposed to be leather, leather bands to hold the feathers in using the skin tone. So I'm going to go back and uh, paint that with XV88 a little bit later in the video to correct that. So the uh, What's currently here in skin tone around his ankles should be leather. What you could do to make Sogar a little bit more interesting than what I made him here is to use a shade of brown perhaps for the feathers around his wrists and his ankles to differentiate from the color from the feathers around his waist and his hair. I decided not to, um, but uh, it could actually really look good if, if uh, that's something you want to try. Using XV88, that's still on the wet palette from from when I painted the spear to add the leather belt around his waist, and also to correct the mistake I made there around the ankles. Also painting the leather bands around his wrists. on the other hand the other ankle and also at the base of the spearhead and the uh, uh, straps around his fingers in his hand around his hand Using Screaming Skull for the uh, impaled skull on the spear. And also uh, on the bone ornaments uh, on his necklace.
missed a little bit of s skin tone there, so going back and, and adding a little bit of the Kislev flash to spots where I missed. Again, benefits of using a wet palette because the the paints you have on on it is going to stay fresh for quite some time, so you can can always rinse your brush really quickly and switch between the colors. Here I'm adding some black. I saw a detail on the arm that I I thought was was a, a piece of the feather that went down his arm. I actually think that might be a mistake. So have a careful look there, and if you want to or follow my directions here or not. It's up to you. Doing some more corrections with this skin tone. Rune Fang steel, steel for the spearhead. Gonna dull it down quite a bit with null oil um, to bring in some of the detailed uh, nicks and whatnot to the spearhead with null oil. So it's good to have a bright silver color. Seraphim sepia, see the wash for the skin tone. When you apply this wash, make sure that you do paint the edges towards the next color a little bit, a little bit over the feathers, so that it covers the edge between the two colors completely. Um, and so that it creates a nice shadow effect. So don't be too afraid to get a little bit of the seraphim on the black. I don't show it on the video, but I do take some of the wash away from underneath his chin. It tends to pool there, and it looks strange because it gets a black line around his head underneath his chin. So make sure that you do take some of the wash away with the tip of your brush. We're going to use null oil to shade the feathers and the hair. do apologize for the crappy shots here of this. Most of this is out of focus. Also some null oil, like I said before, on the spearhead. Also null oil to uh, get some of the details to uh, come forward on, on the skull. So use the null oil wash on the skull as well. Agrax Earth Shade for the wood on the spear. Emperor's Children, I'm going to use that for the heart and also the inside of the mouth. Empress Children is is a color that might surprise you that it works so well for for flesh tone because because of the use of the bright bright pink it looks uh, to be when you look at it in the jar, but it uh, it transforms nicely into gums for example or in this instance to to a fleshy heart uh, when you add Drakeland 
flesh shade on it. It's very hard to see and figure out what's what in the mouth of Sogar. Um, I decided to paint Emperor's Children everywhere where I want to paint teeth to make sure that I do get some gum uh, to show uh, and also a little bit maybe on the outside of the mouth uh, just to get some detail to the mouth. Then Rakeland Flesh Shade uh, to the heart and quite a lot of it to make sure that it, it pulls on the edges of the heart towards the hand and also to make sure that all the details of the veins of the of the arteries of the heart show nicely. The thumb there that you can see it's actually quite hard to see on the mini. It took a while to figure out what was thumb and what was heart there. And then also, like I mentioned before, Reckland to the inside of the mouth. Here you can see that there's a slight small line of Empress Children on his upper lip. That's actual, actually the teeth. It's very hard to see. Using Mornfang Brown for the uh, for the necklace, and for this I'm using a 5-0 brush, same size brush that we used for the teeth, for the mouth, uh, inside of the mouth, and also for teeth and for eyes. Also decided that the there wasn't a, a big of enough difference of the color between the belt and the skin tones. I decided to add more fang to the belt as well to make the the difference uh, or the contrast larger between the belt and the skin. Screaming skull. Uh, use that for the bones on his necklace. Also touching up the the uh, the. Uh, bones in his necklace, the bone ornaments in the necklace. And highlighting the skull now that the the uh, wash is dried, the null oil is dried. So bring up highlighting the top parts of the forehead and also the underneath the eyes and uh, the teeth to bring some depth to the skull. Ceramite white for the teeth and the eyes. Most of the footage when painting the teeth was horrible, so I deleted that. But you can see the end result here. Um, it's hard. To, it's hard to paint the the teeth actually. Uh, so I decided just to put white at the very tops of on the front paths of what could be teeth, what could be gums. Uh, but it ended up quite well, actually, in the end, regardless. Ceramite white also for the eyes. And Abaddon black for the irises and again the horrible focus at least the undersalt so you can see that at least adding some shade with null oil to the bone ornaments in the necklace and then touching that up or highlighting it up again with screaming skull similar to what we did on the skull on the spear. Uh, 
to create nice 3D, not 3D effect, but more depth to the objects on his necklace. Here you can also see the teeth and the tongue of the mouth. But it's finally got some focus. <laughs> Time to highlight the skin tone. So using the same paint that we used for the base layer, still on the palette, and paint uh, the large areas of his skin. Um, stay away from the recessed portions of the mini. So the top parts and uh, the larger areas on his thighs and his back. I always make the comment that uh, you should really here mix the skin tone with some white and go over it again with a second highlight but uh, for this series I'm only doing one one highlighting for for speed purposes and it looks it looks nice anyway Adding some war paint, the picture of Sogar has a white, white lines uh, crossing both of his eyes and he also has a white and red war paint stripe that goes down his chest. I decided to only, only do the white stripe on his chest, but um, adding a lot of water to, to white scar to make it a little bit transparent or behave like a wash so you can decide how much paint that comes on the mini uh, do that for the war paint you can also do that with Mephiston red for example to create a, a red war paint stripe I decided not to I was a little hesitant on that it will that it will look good so I decided to err on the safe side and, and not do that Touching up the belt where I got some more paint, so painting some more fang back on on it there to repair that. Also decided to hide the the glue um, or where I broke the mini with some more fang to make it look like he has a leather strap around his elbow. And then we're done. Uh, so painting the base black is all there is to it. I have, of course, included an optional blood effect step. So depending on if you have uh, X27 or not, um, you might want to add a little extra blood to the heart. But remember to, before you do that, to spray the mini with a matte varnish. Mixing the blood like we, we used to with uh, X27 and Agrox Earthshade. About 50 50 mix, it's usually what I do. And then dab it on. Uh, I don't like to overdo blood effects. So it's just going to be a little bit that runs down his arm on the front and then a little bit that runs down on the back. Uh, and then um, a little bit over his fingers as well. And then that's, that's it.
Alright, so we're done. Uh, Zogar Zag, with and without blood effects. And next time, I promise to do a better job with the camera. Thanks for watching.